Lindsay Tees, and I am a postdoc working with USDA ARS uh, in Columbus. And this system, the compound v notch weir in the control structure is what we use at uh, our control drainage research sites in Northwest Ohio. Um, this methodology was set up uh, by Norm Frowsey and Dr. Larry Brown of The Ohio State University. How this system works is by monitoring the level of the water in the upstream side of the control structure and then you use a flow equation to convert the depth of flow over the V-notch to a flow rate. So the equipment that you need uh, is, is pretty simple. You need just a stop log board like comes in with the control structure uh, and a machinist to cut the V-notch is, is what we used. We did a custom designed V-notch weir um, and then a pressure transducer in each control structure but you also need a barometric pressure transducer that came out for our sites, we needed three pressure transducers for this system. And you need the barometric pressure sensor because the, you need to subtract the barometric pressure from what is measured by the pressure transducer that's underwater. Installation of this system is very easy. <laughs> As you can see uh, by these two pictures, I, what you need to do is, is just simply slide the stop log board in on top of the other boards you would have inside the structure. And, uh, and we suspended the pressure transducers uh, in a stilling well that was inside of the control structure too just to help buffer it from any uh, ripples in the water uh, that might be happening. And then when you go to collect the data, um, we had our, our sensors collecting every 15 minutes um, and continuously. So these level loggers, uh, when anytime you would go out to the field site, they had a memory of about two months with that level of monitoring every 15 minutes. Um, and we'd also hand use hand measurements to check the calibration of the sensors because the sensors would drift as they were installed over time so their accu accuracy would lessen uh, the longer they were out in the field. So it was really important to have a hand measurement to go along with it to help adjust the calculations. And the data processing step is the next part. Really one of the disadvantages with this method I think is, is that it does require a lot of data processing to convert the level, adjust it to account for any sensor drift and then convert it using the equation. Um, but this is just an example, um, some screenshots of my Excel spreadsheets that I used to process the data. And some of the challenges really is that the easy installation and setup, um, the main challenge was for the VNOTCH weir itself was to develop the equation to convert it to flow rate. Uh, most of the other challenges are just related to the pressure transducer itself. Um, which would be the same as with any water table well. Uh, the flow calibration study was conducted by a group of uh, students under, working under Larry Brown. Um, Yu Hui Sheng was a graduate student. She was kind of heading up the effort and um, some undergraduate students actually ran this experiment to pump water through the control structure and look at uh, levels inside the control structure and uh, connect that to the flow rates coming out of the out of the outlet. So the range of conditions that it can measure um, under low flow, this performs really well by the design of the V notch. Um, that that was the point of having the V notch there was to help it monitor low <coughs> flow conditions, which we see a lot of the time in these control structures. But what can it not measure? This system does not work with submerged flow. So that picture kind of shows both submerged flow and frozen condi conditions. Um, one of the main drawbacks of this that I found out as I was analyzing the data was that when you have submerged flow, your, your pressure transducer, your level logger doesn't, it tells you the depth of the water, but you don't know if that water is moving or not. So I was getting false. Uh, basically false readings uh, out of the pressure transducer where it would say um, that it was flowing at max rate when really the water was, was not moving out of the control structure at all. 
Um, and obviously for frozen conditions, the weir is not impacted by the temperature, but the data loggers we used were not very accurate below zero degrees Fahrenheit. Because the sensors were underground, this wasn't an off of wasn't often an issue, but it did come up a few times um, at a couple of our sites. And the maintenance and repairs, really not very much. Um, similar to what how you would maintain the stop log boards in the rest of the control structure, just potentially re-greasing the gaskets. And we never needed to repair uh, any of these plastic V-notches, um, but we did need to replace the pressure transducers after about five years. So just to summarize the benefits, easy to install and to maintain, and it's good at low flow rates, um, but the drawbacks would be you do need to do a lot of post-processing, and that process introduces a lot of potential errors into the flow measurements. Um, but then you also have issues with restricted outlet and freezing uh, as well.